Hello. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Vanderbilts and about uh, my own families and um, distant relatives, or at one time was my ancestry, not family. <laughs> I guess my, my ancestors. And um, some of my distant relatives' ancestry and all that stuff origin originated the same same Dutch Americans um, because the Vanderbilts were Dutch from New Netherlands, like my family, and there wasn't very many. And the Vanderbilts were this huge wealthy family at one time, right? because of railroads and um, so in my family was doing things a little bit different than the Vanderbilts got a little bit greedy and um, about railroads and, and uh, the justice to it I just finished a course in two courses one an MIT course in justice for, about bankings uh, just money and uh, it's about uh, all the different sustainable banking methods that are going about and, and how they're trying to make a more just banking service that serves the community better, has more of a purpose. And then um, Harvard's X online on edx.org uh, banking um, about money or justice I can't remember the name of the course, but it's about justice regarding morality to money, uh, different things that people do, how they, you know, like how Walmart uh, put up life insurance policy on their employees without them even knowing, and um, different things like that, and um, different things that go wrong, you know. That people try to do for profit, and uh, so I took Harvard's course on justice and morality and money, and and then uh, MIT's justice about banking and uh, the the current people from all around the world involved with financial institutions and foundations to better serve the public regarding uh, lending and capital and stuff like that. And so this is a justice issue, uh, kind of, not, well, not only, it's just about um, from what I've read in my family histories that, that was done by this person who bought one of the magistrates' estates who was brother to the, the, the senator I was... And Matt, he was a judge before a senator, but um, that I was sent to who established Oregon with uh, some other families. And he established, the other, his brother established a county. He didn't get established the whole state of California, but he established uh, Fillmore in California with his store, and he was a judge there. And then he started Orange Crops, which he was the first to have Orange Crops and started that. Now there's a bunch of people with orange crops there. Of course, it's not the biggest county of oranges, but uh, and I think a nun was the first one just actually grow or monastery or something. Not a nun. I don't know if it was a nun. It was uh, some Catholic uh, parish, somebody clergy, who started growing oranges in L.A. County. I think it was L.A. County. And uh, that was the very first oranges grown there. But the very first oranges in Fillmore was who I'm related to. Uh, California Elkins Branch. <laughs> and um, so, what, okay, here we go with Vanderbilt. What he, he came from New Netherlands and he had got involved with uh, different kind. He, he started out all the way at the bottom 
and um, started doing like uh, hit boats or ships or something that cargo boats cargo ships uh, and um, they went from cargo ships to something else and eventually the railroad and uh, <clears throat> this is not I don't know it's about around the same time that there was a Dutch <clears throat> president not too much before or after I think it was after definitely probably after so later 1800s Vanderbilt and mid 1800s I think was um, President Van Buren the Vans like Van Halen was Dutch um, Van shoes. <laughs> Those are Dutch. Um, so we have a the Vanderbilts and Van Buren not really green because Van Buren, the president, he's saying, Hey, these railroads, this new transportation, it's like not a good thing doing something to the older transportation which the Vanderbilt started at the boating boats and canals and rivers and all that stuff and so he's not liking the change Van Buren and um, so but Elkins who was had a Elkins is actually a Hebrew lesson but they were Dutch because they had moved to Netherlands and of course married in Dutch women and um, had converted to Christ Christianity I don't know when 1500s as far back as we, we can trace at least one baptism and um, early 1500s and I don't know how much it when so it could have been before that and um, so the Elkins were at the time um, In the latter 1800s, Stephen Elkins, not Stephen Elkins, <clears throat> one of the Elkins had, uh, I don't know if it was William or something, I, he established a supermarket. He was a wholesale, he got into wholesale uh, produce and, uh, Decided he was going to open up to the general public, so he started this big store, and then he found out about the Germans producing um, gasoline, and he thought that was cool, so he started manufacturing gasoline. He was the first in America to manufacture gasoline, and Rockefeller found out he was doing it, went to him, made a partnership, and he became one of the largest shareholders of Standard Oil because of course it was given a use for the oil so um, and it's how oil people got rich so had a demand for the oil but the cars weren't very popular then so and he decided he liked railroads and sold it his shares of Standard Oil, and this is one of the things that I wanted to point out. He sold the things, sold his shares to Standard Oil, not thinking about all the, well, at the time, actually, the railroad seemed probably more profitable, and but you know he didn't like to hang on to it, <laughs> all that stuff. So he sold that, invested in the railroad. But he, the way he did the railroad wasn't the way the Vanderbilts did. 
he didn't go all hog wild and try to get as rich as he he didn't do the oppressive stuff that was like the Vanderbilts who uh, like out for power and greed and so the Vanderbilts got really, I mean, they're just like becoming huge in railroads. And the Elkins had one, but their railroads pretty much within their own sphere, you know. They never went outside the boundaries there. And uh, just whatever is, was reasonable and just, um, you know. They didn't set out to do any harm to anybody just to get the railroad going. It was actually to help people, right? And um, they were like, hey, everybody's got to get out of our way. Kind of thing. The same way that Vanderbilts were. By, you know, forcing people's lands. Whatever he did, I, I'm not even all sure. I just read some of the things about it. And it was a bit... Uh, he was getting carried away. The son of the Elkins... He was getting older, and uh, so he became, I think it was his son, but Stephen Elkins became senator and wrote the Elkins Act to stop the railroads from, from doing like Vanderbilts were doing, even though their family had owned railroads, right, Elkins? And, um, so just that they were Dutch. The Vanderbilt were Dutch. Van Buren was Dutch. But I noticed that, like, the, my family had never gotten the way some of these super wealthy people got. And... Like Luther Elkins, my great fourth great grandfather, when they built something, they sold that to build something else, use that money to build something else, and just kept doing that because they were building from the raw. There was nothing there, just grass and, and trees, right? And um, they would do like a handoff thing, you know, build the rail, they'd build a logging road, then they uh, sell the logging road to a log to somebody wanting to start a logging company and then get build a canal, build a flour mill so they can get the crops going. So people, they're, they're doing their as much as they can to create a, the community, a way of life for people to earn a living without being inventors, right? And so then They're building the schools, and of course the banks come about and stuff, and then, um, you know, they were, of course they were establishing a state government at the time, writing the constitution, building the state government buildings and stuff, moving it around, it moved around a couple times, but when it, even the, the his brother, the judge, he opened a store, had some oranges, and that was his wealth, right? And he was judge. So they always didn't go beyond their own needs. And um, all the way back to the first trading companies, you know, the Dutch, they had some pretty big operations going. What I read, all my, my family was doing was just, you know, taking a ship and trading up with the Indians and going back and, um, you know, selling their goods. And, and um, even the first load was a, a congregation who came up with money to come over to America of Dutch Protestants. And, um, so, they weren't, like, serving no greater purpose than just money, right? Or doing harm that way. I'm 
glad I read that. But I'm just telling. But the same for some reason, you know, that was the Dutch times, the 1800, with the Vanderbilts and the Elkins and the railroad, and uh, Van Buren, the president, Dutch president, one of the few Dutch presidents. And it was right around the, the uh, time of the Civil War, a little bit before and a little bit after. And um, just curious, thinking about it. So I know that the Dutch, even now, and the Elkins wealth has been primary resources, and um, except for one bank guy in Texas. His father was uh, in Walker County, like that show Walker. He was a, a sheriff, Elkins, Sheriff Elkins, in Walker, of Walker County, in Texas. And the real Walker. <laughs> and he... Got shot by a gang, one of the outlaw gangs. But his son didn't want to end up like his father because his father never had a lot of money. And um, got shot, you know. And, um, so his son went, son went to law school and stuff, and he ended up starting a bank, a law firm, all that stuff. And, and um, got really rich. I think Citibank bought the bank there. But, from what I've read, you know, it's just been uh, like the Orange Grove and, and the logging. Uh, my, there was like three logging companies, I think, or two or three in, in my family just in Oregon. And my log fell on my grandfather's, my great grandfather. And he, he got killed, and that kind of ended the logging thing. And my dad and his father and his uncle and stuff, and my uncle. So, so my grandfather, I mean, my grandfather had to log, and then as a kid, and then he, but he has an employee, not like, he wasn't going to get to go to college. Even though his family had start, started the first colleges, he didn't get to go to college. So he, I'm sure he knew his grandparent, well, I'm assuming and um, stuff like that and his aunts and uncles I think my dad knew his you know his great aunts and stuff like that and um, I just uh, I just wonder you know because um the way we have wealth now, in the way, well, all these greedy people, and, you know, Donald Trump, the casino, his family heritage was casinos and slumlords, right? And it's just not the way America came about, you know? It's more like a judge owning an orchard, having a store starting a town. And that's my family. Or a judge coming to Oregon, finding some farmers to help invest in getting a canal and things built, logging roads and stuff like that, you know. The stuff that needs to be done, had to be done, you know. <clears throat> and, not, you know, they just happened to be the people that had enough knowledge and were, you know, knew about justice and institution and and did it. And so it's just I don't know. You got you got Vanderbilt's just got rich, man. Went way out and then you had like original Dutch elk Dutch times. I wonder what it is about Civil War Dutch times that way and and um it's not, it wasn't all Dutch times. There was people striking it rich with gold. Anglo, 
Irish who had ever kind, you know. And um, I'm talking like this, and, and there's so many people who uh, of color. They're probably like, well, why is this not, you know? But um, I, the, I just don't. The Elkins family in Oklahoma, I believe, was a judge. I think he was related one of the brothers. And um, I don't know all of what he did. I know he married an Indian, or not an Indian, American, a Native Native American. And so um, the Elkins in that state are Native American. And some are African American because of the Native American married an African American. And, um, <clears throat> so that's the difference. I mean, that's the only thing about color, of color about my family. I know uh, there was one in New York in the 1800s. I don't know how he was an African American, but he was really Dutch because he had Elkin's name. A Dutch Israeli. Um, because he was had his PhD and it was the 1800s, I imagine he was a member of the family and wasn't like somebody who had been a slave or something like that, right? And or his family had been one of you know because I do I just think that he was actually somehow born in Elkins. Um, so I don't know <clears throat> there is a just want to share I know the Dutch nowadays they are farming back in the golden era they were trading goods with the Indians, they were trading weapons and stuff, though. But, um, primary resources, gold, that was their way they had an $8.7 trillion company. Apple Computers, with all its technology, is only at two point something trillion. And that's modern day, with all huge population increase. And that's back then. Had the uh, East India Trading Company trading with the East. How did Apple get so rich trading with the East? That's what Silicon Valley is everybody's complaining about because Walmart and every and Silicon Valley and all those companies are trading with the East. I know, yeah. And, uh, Vietnam, and wherever else, uh, you go to Target and they're made all over those countries, right? And they exchange labor. That's what they had available. And we had technology and education, and so we've been trading with England, and America have been trading their education and medical. Stuff and some of their technology for labor exchange and Netherlands is still trading farming because a lot of those places there's a lot of places in the, I mean the, a lot of food needs to go to China a lot of food needs to go to all kinds of countries so you don't have really good farming and have large populations and so the Netherlands is a big, it's been trading with those companies. It was the most successful in the world at it. And um, they are trading their resources as far, they're still a farming country. And they're one of the wealthiest. Somehow, they became one of the wealthiest countries from farming. They still do that. 
I mean, they got technology, they got education, but they didn't make their primary resource to try uh, for others, you know, to trade with others. And um, they're trading farming. So I don't know what we have to offer the Netherlands today. But we know that Norway and the Netherlands do invest. I'm sure most of those countries invest in like Google and app, you know, Apple, they have shares as a country in those companies. These are little Scandinavian countries. So I think that's how they have interest in the West. Take part in that trade with technology as they just invest in the shares. They have their own technology too, of course. I know they make better guns than seems Americans do, or we haven't been focusing on that. America and guns. It's an evil. Violence and perversion are two things God hates, it says in the Bible. And what is Americans so obsessed with? Porn, guns, porn and guns, prostitution, strippers, Hollywood, it's all about violence and porn, horror movies, war movies, video games that are all about violence. So, and that's what one of our, our evilest things to our culture. And um, it's what God hates. I just want to share, just talk a little bit about it, because uh, we still have our trading with the East and the trading with the Netherlands, how that plays, you know, um, there's America's, what's just and stuff like that. Um, my own family, ancestors, I never met them, but uh, I'm just telling you from reading, just in the Civil War era, when the Dutch stuff was going on, my family, had judges, either establishing counties or towns or states, doing simple things, orange groves, road promoting for logging road, canals, flour mills, store. And that's America's way of being established. The store owner that established the town I'm in now he has struck it rich. He was Anglo, English, Anglo, Anglo, whatever, American. And invested in a gold operation, mining operation, struck it rich. And that was his claim to fame. And so he built, started a town. And helped establish the state with my Perfect grandfather and some other people who had some kind of claim. What's going on? It was a lot of it was Methodist church because they had moved to Oregon first. Uh, they started missionaries had a little thing going, and then people decided to head out to Oregon who were Methodists and built little communities. Then it sound like uh, what everybody else wanted, and and you know the Dutch trading wasn't all people want to imagine, because I'm sure it was more like the Orange Grove kind of thing, and the logging road, and 
the logging company and the flour mill is simple. The trading guns with Indians taking these beaver skins back and and um, the Indians were in control of supply. And the English did it a different way and I think the French did it a different way where they mass slaughtered things, leave their carcasses just for their, you know, that kind of thing. And wanted to make sure they were in control of supply. But I think the Dutch originally from New Amsterdam, let the Indians be in control of supply. So it was pretty normal. I mean, it wasn't like what... I mean, and they had some trouble even then, you know, the, with the Indians had a war, Dutch Indian Wars, uh, Dutch Native American Wars. And... Uh, Money's the root of it all. 